The January 6th committee will be holding a prime time hearing this evening, the final in a series this summer of testimony alleging an organized conspiracy that led to the Capitol insurrection. The case they've laid out puts former President Trump at the center of that conspiracy. Our congressional correspondent, Lisa Desjardins, has been following all of this closely. And hello to you, Lisa. You've been talking to members of the committee. What should we expect tonight? This will be, of course, as we've expected, a high stakes and potentially high drama hearing tonight, Judy. The theme is the 187 minutes that President Trump spent. And the committee will charge doing nothing to stop the riot here at the U.S. Capitol. What does that mean? That's the time from when President Trump ended his speech before that Stop the Steal rally close to the White House, and then up to the time, just over three hours later, when he sent out a tweet asking the rioters essentially to stop. I think tonight's hearing, we're going to be seeing some graphic pictures of what was going on at the Capitol while we are hearing about the timetable, what Mr. Trump was and was not doing. I do not think it'll be family viewing. I think it's going to be an emotional night. We will also hear from two witnesses in person who were there with Mr. Trump on January 6th. That's Matthew Pottinger. He was the deputy national security advisor. And also next to him, Sarah Matthews, the deputy press secretary. Now, those were both two people who were sworn to serve the president, but who left because they felt, and this is what the committee will say tonight, what we may hear them say tonight, that they could no longer serve the country and serve President Trump at the same time. Also tonight, Judy, we should hear, we're told, we'll hear more about uh, communications involving members of Congress. And, of course, PBS will be carrying these hearings live. So, Lisa, uh, there has been a poll the NewsHour has been part of. What are we learning from that poll about how Americans are seeing the evidence that the committee's been building up in these hearings? so important while we pay attention to lawmakers here to figure out what, what is the country getting from all of this. We asked the question, should President Trump be charged with a crime, which is sort of a central part of the hearings here. And as you see, the country is split, but leaning toward 50 percent say, yes, he should be charged with crimes. We also asked, will the former president be charged with crimes? Look at that. A huge difference. There you see almost two-thirds of the people answering our survey said, no, they do not believe in the end, though they think he should, that President Trump will be charged. You see a lot in that data, including some mistrust of institutions and how they will carry out the situation. We also sort of a different question, not about crimes or what President Trump will happen to him in the future, but do people personally blame former President Trump for what happened on January 6th. Here's what we got in this survey right now. 57% said, yes, he is to blame for the events of January 6th. Look at what we found just after January 6th, there in January of 2021. Those figures, very similar. In fact, a little bit less um, of a view that the president is to blame. It's interesting because, of course, we know that people are watching these hearings, Judy, but this tells us that as far as people wanting to cast a finger of blame at the president, they're about where they were right after January 6th. Really, really interesting. And, and Lisa, what are we seeing from these polls about whether Americans are watching the hearings or not and how that breaks down along partisan lines? Yeah, you know, I think when you talk to the committee, they believe the viewership is, is strong, stronger than even they expected. But how many people are watching? Who is watching? We ask that question. So if we ask people if they're paying at least some or a lot of attention to the January 6th hearings, you look, it's a breakdown by party. No surprise, 80% of people who identify as Democrats say, yes, they are watching. Independents, more than half. Republicans, the smallest number, but still 44% of Republicans. And we know, in general, there's a partisan split on whether they blame President Trump, whether they think he should be charged. But 44% of Republicans, nonetheless, are still watching these hearings. And we also asked them, so what do people think happened on January 6th? What are their views right now after these hearings have been going forward? First, we asked, is it an, who thinks it's an, an insurrection? About 50% of people now said they do believe it was an insurrection. That's about where it was just last year before these hearings started. But look what has changed a little bit. Those who said protected political speech is what happened on January, January 6th, that number's gone down. Fewer people believe that, and more people believe that it was unfortunate, but in the past. What I take from that, Judy, is that more people um, are less willing to defend what happened on January 6th, and more people just want it to go away. One quick number also, though, 
is this an issue in November? We asked that. Is January 6th what's happening here a top issue for you? There you see, for most Americans, it's not. Democrats say the most. What's at the top of the issue list? I don't think our viewers will be surprised that at the top of the issue list for everyone is inflation. Democrats also, top of their list, abortion. But in, in the January 6th hearings, it not getting more than 17 percent, and that's just among Democrats. So meantime, Lisa, you've also been watching what's been going on with efforts to fix, if you will, the Electoral Reform Act. We know that was a factor in what happened on January 6th. What is going on there? Where does that stand? Uh, so much to say. The Electoral Count Act, there was a bipartisan bill introduced in the Senate. We've been telling you about it, and now it is real. Let me go through what this would do. Um, it would make governors across the country be the conclusive deciders in certifying electors. The law right now is less clear than that. It would say that disputes for many candidates would have to go to a panel of judges. That would be new. It would narrow when Congress can object, under what cir circumstances, and it would require a one-fifth vote of each chamber to advance objections. Judy, as you well know, right now it just takes one member from each chamber, incredibly low bar. This would make it harder to object, and it puts up more guardrails to prevent the questions and motivations that we saw at play on January 6th. We'll, we'll watch where this goes. It looks like it has a lot of support. Uh, we'll be keeping you updated on it. Yeah, so interesting, and we know you're going to continue to keep an eye on it. Lisa Desjardins, we'll see you tonight.